Let me tell you, it is never boring covering Apple because they always have a few surprises up their sleeve and it is official. Apple went from not having an event this month to having an event right at the tail end of the month with their new Apple event, Scary Fast, and it's breaking a lot of traditional Apple rules, which has me excited. So I wanna tell you all about what to expect at this new surprise October Apple event taking place on October 30th at, get this, 5 p.m. Pacific time, or if you're living on the East Coast like me, the best coast, uh, 8 p.m. Yeah, at night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's like a Halloween, like scary, fast surprise from Apple. A night event for Apple, usually not something that happens. And I think that in itself is interesting. But uh, the scary fast tagline, I think, is pretty much a confirmation that this is going to be a Mac event. And I think the big giveaway that this is going to be a Mac focused event is that in this scary fast invitation for the event, uh, Apple basically shows off this animation and then it you know, pans out to be the Mac OS face, kind of looking a little spooky. So yeah, this is definitely a Mac focused event. Uh, Apple does not really use terminology for speed unless usually it's relating to the Mac. They've used it a lot in the past for previous Mac events where they kind of refer to the performance of these uh, new chips that they're going to be announcing. And, you know, we were talking about maybe the possibility of Apple doing like a refreshed iMac update and maybe including an M2 chip. But the fact that they're using the scary fast tagline means that this is obviously going to be an event where they show off new M3 Macs. And that personally has me really excited. So Mark Gurman was talking about a refresh to the 24 inch iMac being the most likely Mac uh, to be announced at this event. Obviously with uh, a refresh, with the scary fast tagline, it will be an M3 iMac, which is exciting. This might be the first M3 computer we get to see. So that's the first computer I think we'll see Apple announce. Obviously the main highlight of that 24 inch iMac update is going to be um, the new M3 chip. Now. The M3 chip itself is gonna be running on a three nanometer process, which is the same process the A17 Pro is running at. So it's gonna be more powerful for each CPU core, each GPU core, and it's also now going to be more efficient, which means you are going to see some energy saving gains probably as well. But for an iMac, that's not really that big of a deal. That's gonna make more sense on the laptops where you have these battery powered devices, but still, uh, the M3 is expected to come with uh, an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU, which is the same uh, as the M2 chip. But again, each of those cores are going to be stronger, resulting in faster single core performance, faster multi-core performance, and of course, faster GPU performance as well. Uh, I think the most interesting rumor at the M3 chip though is the rumored uh, baseline memory upgrade. So currently if you buy uh, an M1 iMac, it comes with eight gigabytes of memory and the same for all the M2 computers. But with this M3 chip, it's rumored to now start at 12 gigabytes of memory. And that might not sound like a big deal. You're probably like, oh, well, who cares about 12 gigabytes of memory? But that additional four gigabytes of memory, I think makes the baseline levels of these computers a much more attractive option for budget shoppers because there's always been like that talk of like Apple Silicon Macs of like, okay, eight gigabytes, it's, it's a little sparse to get by on, uh, especially in the modern age of computing where maybe you want to like edit some video, maybe do some photo editing. Having a little bit more memory could be helpful. And it's not like 12 gigabytes is like a ton of memory, but an extra four gigabytes on the base level models, I think is going to make them a much stronger recommendation. And then across the board, as you upgrade these memory configurations, it's not gonna go from eight to 16 now, it's gonna go from 12 to 24 gigabytes of memory. And that is gonna be a really big boost to the baseline uh, M3 computers. So that is something I'm really excited to see. Uh, in terms of upgrades to the iMac itself, don't expect too much. There's rumors that maybe the display will get like a slight upgrade, like the studio display can go up to 600 nits of brightness. Uh, the current iMac maxes out at 500 nits, so maybe that's something we'll see Apple bring along. Um, I think maybe they might include something like a center stage webcam rather than the 1080p webcam it currently has, which might be kind of like a slight downgrading resolution, but uh, a cool feature to throw on the iMac. In terms of design, like there were like some leaked USB-C cables where people thought they were for the iPhone 15 because they were like color matching, but, or they just had like different colors, but I actually think these were for the iMac uh, because they're USB-C to USB-C. They're the color braided cables that currently ship on the iMac. And you can kind of see the color coordination that we might expect for different iMacs. And I think the interesting thing with these colored cables, there's actually a black cable, which might mean that we might see uh, a black 24 inch iMac. 
And it seems like maybe Apple listened to that feedback and is throwing in a more neutral black option for this 24 inch iMac. But I think the important thing to point out is that these cables are USB-C to USB-C, meaning that one of the bigger upgrades for this iMac is going to be Apple killing off all the lightning magic accessories. So that's the magic mouse, the magic keyboard, the magic trackpad. They all charge and pair via a lightning port now. And with Apple switching the iPhone over to USB-C, well, obviously they're gonna have to switch over all their Mac accessories as well. So I would expect all updated versions of Apple's Mac accessories to take advantage of a USB-C port. So a new USB-C magic mouse, trackpad, and magic keyboard. And I think that's pretty much like the main upgrades on this 24 inch iMac. I think the wild card might be is that there was a rumor that now that Apple does have the Pro chips and they didn't have that when the M1 iMac first launched is that there will be a configuration of this uh, M3 iMac that goes all the way up to an M3 Pro iMac. And I do feel like that might be an option. I'm not sure if we'll get a bigger screen option, but in terms of the 24 inch, I could see them doing an M3 Pro iMac considering they sell an M3 Pro Mac mini. And that could be a nice little power boost, could be a really, you know, competent workstation with the built-in screen. I feel like 24 inches for that screen size for professional use might be a little bit too small, but hey, uh, more options for more power on the iMac, I think is always great. Now. Mark Gurman also said that MacBook Pros might be coming. And at first I was thinking, you know, when I did some of my initial uh, videos talking about this event, that those were less likely. So I was like, okay, MacBook Pro, they kind of updated those in January. It wouldn't be a full year until the refresh. And then Apple's gonna be announcing the M3 chip, the M3 Pro chip and the M3 Max chip all at the same time. They usually don't do that, right? But Apple using the tagline scary fast makes me think, this is more than just a regular M3 update. I, I don't feel like they would be touting the scary fast tagline uh, if they were only introducing the baseline M3 chip. So just because of that, I think, and because the shipping dates are slipping on these MacBook Pros, I think they are much more likely to be shown off at this event. And I'm in the market for a new MacBook Pro. I'm still using uh, my M1 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro. So if they announce a MacBook Pro, I'm planning on getting one. I'm planning on upgrading that thing pretty highly too, so I'm excited for that. Uh, but yeah, with the M3 Pro versions and M3 Max versions of the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, this is where we're gonna see some really significant power gains. So on the M3 Pro chip, we're expecting the base model to be at 12 CPU cores, and then the higher end versions to be at 14 CPU cores, and then the base level M3 Pro chip for GPU is gonna be 18 cores, and the Max is gonna be 20 cores. Now, the interesting thing about the M3 Max is this is going to be the first like pairing of the Apple Silicon chips where the Max chip, instead of just getting more GPU cores, is actually gonna get more CPU cores as well. So the M3 Max is rumored to have 16 CPU cores, which is great. And then uh, the GPU core count is gonna go from 32 on the lower end models to up to 40 on the highest end model. And with that three nanometer, and with that three nanometer architecture, uh, that M3 Max chip sounds crazy powerful. The fact that it's gonna have an extra two CPU cores even over the Pro chip, I think is really good news. And I think uh, with the increased efficiency, it's probably gonna generate less heat than what the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips were doing. And with all that extra CPU, oh, CPU cores and you know, with the extra clock speed on the GPU cores, I feel like these laptops are gonna be crazy fast or scary fast as Apple puts it. And that memory upgrade is also coming to these M3 Pro and M3 Max chips. So apparently instead of starting at 16 gigabytes of memory for the M3 Pro configurations, it's gonna start at 24 gigabytes of memory. And then apparently you're gonna get options to upgrade that to 48 gigabytes of memory and then 96 gigabytes of memory. And then on the M3 Max chip where you can upgrade the memory even further, you're gonna be able to get up to 144 gigabytes of unified memory. And when I think about it, that memory upgrade sounds pretty insane because my M1 Ultra Max Studio maxes out at 128 gigabytes of memory. So you're telling me they're gonna release like a 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro with 144 gigabytes of memory? I'm excited for that. Man, these, these things sound insane. In terms of other upgrades to the MacBook Pros, don't get me wrong, this is primarily going to be focused, at least rumored to be focused on these M3 Pro and M3 Max chip uh, upgrades. But um, there were some rumors floating around that maybe Apple is working on a more energy efficient mini LED display for the MacBook Pros that might be ready to put in there. And that coupled together with the more efficient three nanometer chips uh, might mean some extra battery life savings. So maybe we'll see like a one to two hour battery gain on these MacBook Pros, which, you know, the battery life is already so good on them, but any, you know, additions to battery life is always welcome. Uh, and then 
maybe some small hardware improvements somewhere here or there, but don't expect a major redesign of the MacBook Pro. Uh, the bodies on the MacBook Pros usually last around four to five years, and the you know MacBook Pro body was just updated in 2021, so don't expect any crazy redesigns. But yeah, that is pretty much what we can expect for Apple's surprise, scary fast October 30th event. Again, it's gonna take place at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. if you're over on the West Coast. And yeah, I'm really excited for this event. I'm, you know, obviously a big Mac fan. I didn't think we we're gonna get any Mac news uh, before the end of this year when we started September. And now all of a sudden, there is actually like an event invite. It's not just a press release. Like there is, like when I made my last video, I'm like, maybe this will just be a press release. No, there's actually an online event. It's taking place at night, which is super interesting to me. And if you can't tell, I'm really excited for all this stuff. So if you're as excited as I am, get subscribed to the channel because once Apple releases all this stuff, obviously we're gonna talk a lot about it. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you give me a like. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a spooky, scary, fast Apple event and a spooky, scary Halloween. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.